Hi, this is Phil from Simply Rhino, and in this short video, we're going to take a quick look at shut lining and curve piping, both of which are new in Rhino V5. Let's take a look first at the shut lining command. Here I've got uh, some planar curves representing a panel gap, a filler cap, and a grill area and let's have a look at how we can apply these onto the engine cover. First of all I'll run apply shut lining, pick the object onto which I want to apply the shut lines, then configure some options. Here I'm specifying a radius of 2, a round groove profile and selecting that I, the option to pull the curves onto the object and then I'll pick a couple of the curves in question and enter twice and then the command will start. It takes a little while for this to, uh, command to complete because of the very tight mesh settings I have in this file but shortly you'll see the command completes and if I switch to rendered view you'll see the shot lining represented as a rounded groove with my chosen diameter. What's nice about this command is that if I move one of the curves then the shut lining will move with the curve So remember here that I'm not ha actually having to modify the model at all. I'm merely representing these shut lines with curves and the shut line is merely something that displays at render time. If I want to add existing curves to some shut lining, I can again run the command. Pick the object enter to get into the options and add curves. I'm going to use a bigger radius this time of 6. Again use the rounded groove profile and again pull to object and pick these curves here that represent the grill area. And the shut line is applied. So by using a nice chunky shut lining here with a large radius we can give the impression of a grill area quite nicely here. So none of this is actually modelled into the geometry here it's all just purely a representation at render time. So this makes it very easy to show different iterations of an object without actually having to modify the surfaces or poly surfaces. Next up, let's have a look at the curve piping option. Here I'm going to turn on some other curves here. I'm going to create some rails here on top of this engine cover. And rather than actually modeling these and have the weight of the poly surface bogging down my model, again I'm going to just do this as something that represents purely at render time. So I'm going to run apply curve piping, select the curves that I want to apply the piping to, enter, specify a radius, whether I want them faceted or not, the number of segments that I want, which will affect the smoothness and the type of cap that I want here. And then I can let the command run and my pipes will be built. If I pick these up ob these objects here, I'll be able to go into properties and curve piping has its own properties here. And for example I can very easily increase the radius of these pipes here. So again, I 
I can play with the options as I'm progressing. And in order to see these objects in the rendered view, then I need to make sure that I've got the uh, render curves option on.